Hey guys, how are you? It is Christmas Eve, December 24th, and it's a Thursday. And I'm going to be doing a drill with me on... This one is it gorgeous. I'm going to be working on this section here. Today. Oh, that's where my magnet was. So yesterday I know I was supposed to come on and do a drill with me then, but but however, that didn't really work because I was trying to figure out stuff and trying to figure out what to talk about and yeah that just did not work in my favor so today A story in a poem. This one is Twas the Night Before Christmas, and that's what I'm going to start off. So, twas the night before Christmas when all through the house not a creature was staring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were all nestled and snug in their beds while versions of sugar plum danced in their heads in a mama and her kerchief and I, and I, in my cap, had just settled down for a long winter's nap. Oh yeah, just so you guys know, I am wearing my Christmas PJ shirt. Mm -hmm. Says, it's Christmas. <laughs> I love this one. And that's why I wanted to wear it. But anyways. I'm just gonna... I'll do that. Okay, when when out on the lawn there was across such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore the open the shutters that and threw up the stash.
The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of the midday of two objects below. When what to my wondering eyes should appear but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer, with the little driver so lively and quick, I knew in the moment it must be St. Nick. More rapid than eagles, his uh, coursers they came, and he whistled and shouted, and then and called them by name. Now Dasher, now Dancer, now Prancer and Vixen, on Comet, on Cupid, on Donner and, Blix and Blitzen, on top of the porch, to the top of the wall. Now dash away, dash away, away all, as dry leaves before the hurricane fly, when they meet and an with, with an obstacle mount to the sky. So, so up to the house top, where the coursers they flew, with all the full, with the sleigh fell full, bleh, with the sleigh full of toys and Saint Nicholas too, and then the twinkling I heard on the roof, the pants, the prancing and the pawing of the little hoof, and as I drew in my hand and was turning around down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. Okay, the stump of a pie he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke that encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowl full of jelly. He was chubby and plump, a right of a jolly old elf. And I laughed when I saw him in, in spite of myself. A, a wink of an eye and a twist in his head. Soon he gave me to know nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to work and filled all the stockings. Then he t turned with a jerk and lying on his finger inside of his nose and giving, up, giving a nod up the chim chimney he rose. He sprang up, up to his sleigh to give his team a whistle, and away they flew like the down of a thistle. But I heard him exclaim, eerie, he drove out of sight. Happy Christmas to all, and to all a good night. One of my favorite poems, honestly. Okay, so the next thing that I am doing is a Christmas Carol by by Charles Dickens. Mm-mm-mm. <clears throat> 
Oh yeah, I will be doing another video because I got another early Christmas present that came today. I'm in our club. I love it. I was so happy when I saw this. That, like, honestly. And I'm sorry I didn't do one yesterday, too. Like I said, I was trying to find things and nothing was working in my favor. And I'm like, okay, I am not guess I'm not really going to do it. Okay. Uh, okay. A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. I know I've already said that, but I'm saying it again. Okay. In 1843, on Christmas Eve, in London, Ebenezer Scrooge, a misery old businessman, does not share the merriment of Christmas. He declines not to share. Oh, sorry. Let me restart this. Okay. In 1943, on Christmas Eve, in London, Ebenezer Scrooge, a misery old businessman does not share the merriment of Christmas. He declines his cheerful nephew Fred's invitation to an annual Christmas dinner party and rejects two gentlemen's offer to collect money for, for charity. His loyal employee Bob Cracks asks Scrooge to allow him allow him to have a day off on Christmas Day to spend time with his family to which Scrooge R-E-L uh, re, 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 I think that's what it said <laughs> uh, agrees before leaving in his house Scrooge encounters the ghost of his decreased business partner Jacob Marley, who warns him to be, uh, warn him to re re repent his wicked ways, or else he would be condemned in the afterlife, like he was carrying heavy chains forged from his own greediness. Jacob informs Scrooge that he would be haunted by three spirits. Who would guide him out of his misery? I can't wait till later tonight. I'm so excited because we're gonna be watching that movie with a George C. Scott in it. That's the best one to watch. And we're doing meat pies at my grandmother's. Mm, so good. Okay, first Scrooge visited by the candle like of ghosts of Christmas past who takes him back in time to his childhood. An early adult life, Scrooge really relieves his only chi childhood in a boarding school and his relationship with his beloved sister, Fan, who became a mother of Fred. Um, Scrooge later began, began a successful career in business and money 
running as an employee under Fizz Wing, Fizzy Wing, Wig. Oh, sorry, Fizz, Fizz, I Wig. Uh, and he became became engaged to a woman named Belle. However, the ghost showed him this how the Scrooge. The ghost shows Scrooge how Bell left him when he became became obsessed with wealth. A dissipated Scrooge exhausted the spirit with his candle under suffer a cap it is rocketed back to the present. Now, this is, like, I only found, like, a printout of a short version of it. I didn't want the actual book, per se. <clears throat> okay, next Scrooge meets the Mary of a ghost of Christmas present who shows him the joys of wonder of Christmas Day. Scrooge, Scrooge and the ghost visit Bob's house learning that his family is content with their small dinner. All the while, Scrooge starts to take pity on Bob's son, Bob's ill son, Tiny Tim. The ghost abruptly, I think that's how you say it, ages uh, commenting that Tiny Tim will not likely survive until next Christmas. The ghost warns Scrooge about the, the evil's ignorance and want. Big Ben begins tolling as midnight as ignorance and want. Manifestes themselves before Scrooge as two wrenched children who grow into the violent, insane individuals, leaving the spirit uh, withering away. Yesterday, before I continue on with the story, I told you guys that I was going to the beach with my aunt, and that was a lot of fun. It was cold, but it was fun. We did find a little bit of sea glass, too, which was nice. Not as much as we usually find, but I got a small handful <clears throat> okay, finally, the ghost of Christmas yet to come, appearing as a dark shadow and takes Scrooge into the future. He witnessed a group of businessmen discussing the death of an unnamed colleague, saying they would only attend the funeral if lunch is provided. After chased across London by the ghost, Scrooge recognized his chairwoman, Mrs. D Dilber, selling his stolen possessions of the deceased. Shortly afterwards, Scrooge sees the aforementioned colleague's body on a bed. 
followed by a vision of family who is relieved that he is dead as they. Have more time to pay off their, de their debt. The spirit transports Scro Scrooge to Bob's residence, discovering that Tiny Tim has died. Okay, Scrooge is then escorted to the cemetery where the ghost points out in his own grave, realizing as the man who died, realizing the consequ consequences, bleh, realizing the consequences upon his ac actions. Scrooge decides to change his ways just as the ghost forces him to fall into an empty coffin lying in a deep grave that sits above the fires of hell, waking up to his own room on Christmas Day with a love and happiness in his heart, a, a cheerful, a, a gleeful Scrooge decides to surprise, surprise Bob's family with a turkey dinner. I'm almost done. And ventures out with the charity workers and the citizens of London to spread happiness in the city. And later he attends Fred's Christmas dinner where he is warmly welcomed. Um, the following day he gives Cratchit a raise and Cratchit states to... The viewers that Scrooge becomes a father figure to Tiny Tim who escapes death. Scrooge now treats everyone with kindness, generos generosity, and compassion. And then Tiny Tim would say, God bless us, everyone. I love Christmas Carol. I... One of the best stories. So I hope you guys like this drill with me that I did as part down of my countdown to Christmas. But I just, like I said, I wanted to find a shorter version than the actual book is man if i printed out that book it would have been like over a hundred pages i'm like no 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 i want something short and sweet and i did So I am going to end it here. Um, I will be back later today because 
I want to do that unboxing of what I got from Diamond Art Club today. So, I gotta do the recycling after. I should have done it because our recycling just went, so. So, I'm gonna be working on trying to finish this section off. Like I said, Merry Christmas, everyone. And I will be back later on today to do that unboxing and I'm gonna probably be not back till next week so I hope everyone will stay safe this holiday season as well and um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I hope everyone gets what they want for Christmas as well. Yeah, I know it's not all about the presents, but, you know, it is a nice thing to do. Merry Christmas to one and all. And as Tiny Tim would say once again, may God bless us everyone. Bye guys.